Network. Stand by. Ladies and gentlemen. What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to finally give you guys my review of the Rococo suit. I wanted to wait a little bit before I got to test it out and everything. You know, Rococo did reach out and ask me to do a review of the suit, and so I wanted to put it through his paces, make sure I really understood the software before I put anything up. And so without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you can see, I have the Rococo suit on right now. It has a ton of different sensors in it. Like, like if you, I'm not sure if you can see this, but it has zippers going all around. And that's because I can actually take the sensors out of this suit and say like I wanted to mocap somebody smaller, I can actually get a smaller mocap suit and just take these sensors out of this one and then put them in a smaller suit. That way you save a lot of money because the sensors are probably the most expensive part when it comes to the system. And if I turn around here, you can see I have like a head strap and everything that connects all the way through the back. So everything is pretty, um, they're like all the different pockets and everything in here. Like I can fit the head strap right into my back pocket and everything. Then if I look right here, we actually have a USB cord that goes to a portable battery, which you have to supply yourself. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but this is a battery that I got a few years ago from Best Buy. You just plug it in with USB and the setup and everything was easy for this as well. I went right to the Rococo's YouTube site and I was able to just pull up the different YouTube videos that I needed to get everything signed up. Like I have this hooked up to my Wi-Fi router, which is hooked up to this computer. So it's as simple as just, you know, connecting the two together. And since they're all on the same network, they automatically start speaking to each other. And so to be able to run your mocap studio, you have to download this program called Rococo Studio, which I have open here. And then it's just going to ask you to come over to like your actor profiles, which I already made a Wimbush one here, but you can make several on here. And basically it's going to ask you like what your total height is in centimeters or inches. And so I had my wife actually do a couple of measurements for me. Like they, they suggest maybe just doing a total height first. And then if you want something more accurate, you can actually go through and measure out all the different attributes that's asking you to put in here. And so you'll have a, like your avatar is going to be exactly proportioned to like how your body type is. And then once you're done with that, you just click save profile, but I already have mine built out. And so then the next step is you just come over here to new project and then you just enter it in. So maybe I'll just put tutorial and then scene one looks fine. So I'm going to click over on that. Now you see we have like a floating avatar in here and that's because we just need to calibrate our suit. But first, if I look over here on the right hand side, if I come down here where it says add objects, all I'll do is click this and then I just click the profile that I want. Like I alluded to earlier, you can actually have several different profiles on here. So like if I wanted to have my son have his own profile or my wife or my daughter, they can make their own profiles and it will save it on here. So if they ever wanted to use the suit for anything, they're able to do so. And so I only have the Wimbush one, which is me for this one right here. So I'm just going to click this one on. And then you see up here in the top right, it's going to have my name up under here. So all I have to do is click this right here, which is paired to my suit. Click and drag it under Wimbush. And now you see I have a blue avatar, which if I hover over it, it says Wimbush. But you can see like everything is kind of discombobulated. It's not really calibrated yet, which is a real easy fix. So all I have to do is come up here. Click this button here. It is going to ask me to get into a straight pose. I just have to hold it for a couple of seconds. Then everything's going to line up one to one. So let me click that now. So there you have it. Now I have my avatar is all held up one to one. And so like I can move my head movement all around and it's picking it up pretty nicely. Like I know they suggest like don't do this around like high middle frequency areas because all these sensors in here, they're magnetic. And so you might pick up some interference. But if I look down here in my bottom right, right here it has a representation of my avatar. And these green dots mean that like all these green sensors are good. The yellow ones mean that it's okay. But if it's grayed out, that means it's totally not working. But it looks like my workspace is perfect for doing mocap work. So if I move back here, I'm just going to do a few movements. Just kind of see how this is picking up one to one and how accurate this is.
so you can see that this is picking up pretty accurately i mean whenever you have both feet leave off the ground sometimes you do get a little bit of drift i noticed my avatar does get a little bit funky but if i ever need to recalibrate i just come over here click this button here just get back into my straight pose and then we're all set to go so i'm going to show you guys a little recording maybe i'll just do a little jumping around here or something like that so and then in like some upcoming videos because i'm going to be using this a lot i'm actually going to be putting together maybe just like a couple of shorts and i want to show you guys how you can take your avatars from Rococo into the programs that i use like cinema 4d and unreal engine and yes we could do live link to unreal engine but i found that if i do everything in Rococo and then i do my cleanup and everything in here and then export from Rococo, bring that into unreal i get a lot better results with my avatar because when you live link everything to unreal or any other program whatever you see is what you're going to get so the tools in rococo studio are built extremely well so they're good with picking up with drift or anything that might happen there and they have a whole bunch of filters in here as well that will help you guys out so let me get a scene started here so let's say um i'm just going to do a couple of poses here and then i'm just going to click record and i'll get set it away All right, so I did a couple of movements in there. I just wanted to do a couple of bouncing movements too, just so you can see what happens whenever my feet leave the ground. So if I wanna pull up my timeline and just kind of see how everything panned out, I'm gonna come up to here where it says scene one, take one, just right click here, and then I'm gonna open up my take. So now it's just gonna play back through everything that we just recorded. And then this is a cool function up here too. So it says focus camera on the character. If I click on this, now it's gonna focus on my character, which I think looks really cool in the viewport. But as you can see, we get some really nice movements. I know there's a little bit of um, going through my geometry here and stuff like that. So like whenever I'm recording, I'm kind of keeping in mind, like I don't wanna to get too close to my sensors. So I try to keep just like my limbs a little bit separated from each other. But, you know, you'll, you'll get some type of reaction in there like that sometimes. So it looks like it picked up a pretty good track here. Like if you look down here, you can see that there's little gaps in here. If I click on this, this will actually show us like whenever it's solid, that means that both of our feet are on the ground. But if I scroll over, that's usually where my foot is picking up. So Rococo suggests that you always wanna at least have one sensor on the ground. I know there are ways to, you know, get around this. So if you have like a Vive station with like the different base stations and everything that will kind of scan the room, I know you could kind of fix around that a little bit with that. And so that will give you a lot more leverage. But unfortunately, I don't have a Vive anymore. I sold it at the beginning of the year just because I used my Quest. So that's something I'm not able to experiment, at least yet. So if I scroll through here, you can see that it's picking up. Yeah, it's pretty much picking up one-to-one -one all my movements and everything there. So I'm pretty impressed with the way everything works. I don't have shoes on. I'm using just my bare feet with the sensors as close to the ground as we could get. So it looks like it picked it up pretty well. And whenever we're ready to export this out, it's pretty cool because, you know, a lot of us Cinema 4D artists, we use Mixamo a lot. You know, we have our avatars that we build in Cinema. We export them as an FBX or OBJ, bring them into Mixamo and do the auto rigger because a lot of us don't like rigging and it just makes it really easy for us. Well, with Rococo Studio, we can actually export this out as a Mixamo avatar and that way it makes it a lot easier for when we need to bring it into Unreal and Cinema 4D. So to be able to export that out, we just come down to here where it says exporter. And then you see we have a couple of functions down here. Like right now under Skeleton, I actually have a selected for Mixamo, but we also have like a Rococo Newton by default, or if you want to export out the Maya or 3D Max, we have those defaults as well. But for Cinema 4D artists, more than likely we want to export it as a Mixamo rig. And so we can also export it like different formats. Usually we want to just use FBX. And then whenever you're ready, you just select where you want to go. You export it out and then you're off to the races. 
So in this video, I just wanted to do an overview slash review of the suit. I didn't want to do it in like a tutorial fashion just because I want to do those as separate videos. So whenever I bring it into Cinema 4D, I'm going to do a separate video just for that. And then when I'm ready to bring it into Unreal, I'm also going to do a video for that. So make sure you come back to the channel and watch when I bring those videos up. And also make sure you go to my IG page because I'm going to be putting up the short films on there as well. So if you find this video to be helpful, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Hello. subscribe to the channel if you're new and as always stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video i'll see you soon thank you guys again take care